Hello and welcome to my 50 subscriber special, which is a showcase of my 1400 scale LEGO model of HMS Arc Royal R09. Now don't confuse this with the previous video I did on um, the World War II version. This is the Cold War version, which served for more, more than 30 years in active service. So first of all I'm just going to do a quick um, sort of overview. So this is a toffee, sorry. <laughs> the handle of the camera. And now I'm just gonna go through from the very um front of the body to the stern and show you some special features along the way. So this is the end of the steam catapult which was used to um help the uh F four Phantom jets as you see here take off as they could no longer take off on their own power. Um, Trying to get this focus. Okay, maybe not. But I know. So moving on, there's another catapult going along here, and then um, these. I don't know what to call them. Brackets, almost. These were used to uh, string nets across the side of the boat to stop uh, any aircraft who missed any of the wires from falling overboard. Um, one of the main features on this ship is actually the hangar which can have the access using this brick although I'm going to show you that at the end because I don't want a big gaping hole in the middle of the ship as I'm overviewing it. Now moving on this is this is the bridge which I am quite pleased with as it looks quite original to the the bridge on board the Arc well. This is the radar set, the small radar set on the top of the bridge. Moving along, these are supposed to represent the Blackburn Buccaneers, which were the carriage main sort of strike force for carrying bombs to the enemy or to their um, final resting place. This is the next major mast. Uh, you can see it, it houses the, the radios and obviously there would be a flag flying up there as well and this is the rear uh, radar set which would have been used to track aircraft whereas the front would have been used to track other ships so this one tracked the aircraft and just below I don't know whether you can see that that glass piece of um, Lego represents uh, the almost uh, air traffic control of the carrier to guide the planes in. Moving on, there's Sea Kings and Merlin. Obviously, we didn't have Merlins during um, the Cold War, but I added it for more realistic point for a realistic point of view of having more um, helicopters on board. You can see the whole way, oh, the whole way down. It is striped and marked with white. Um, moving on, this is this is machine gun. And again, another bracket for the nets. And on the deck, there's the arrestor wires to stop the aircraft from um, overshooting. The uh, landing lights, which I'll be showing you later on in a minute. And more machine guns. So, again, general overview there the whole deck and the runway. So I'll turn it around. And we'll go from the stern this time. So this is obviously a propeller. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this area at the back was used for, probably launching small ships. Is, uh, you know, along again, and lifeboots on the side. Another bracket for hoisting ships. More lifeboots. Again, another bracket for um, the nets. Um, this is the another part of the radar system. This white dome. It was used to track incoming aircraft in the 360 degree view. Again, more bracket. Another bracket down there more hatches on the side 
Um, I'm going to just, um, before we get into some of the special features, I'm going to give you a view of the body. I'm coming right up. So, now, as you may know, a lot of my ships now are motorized. So this is what I'm going to showcase now. Um, I don't know whether you wanted them before, but any of the motors and lights um, on board any of my ships are accessed by a hatch on the hinge here. So this is the, the main motor. You obviously need to you need to have Technic connectors to connect it to the these bricks down at the bottom, which in turn connect it to the key. So I made a wee handle here. All you have to do is flick that. Now, whichever way you, you, you um, turn it determines the way, obviously, the power moves and that. But I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. So, close the hatch so it can't be seen. A bit tight. Um, we can switch on the propeller here. So, you can see it, it moves at a pretty good speed. Anyway. Um, I had to take out a brick above that just for enough clearance. I'm going to switch that off because it's very noisy. And um, turn it round again. And give you the view of the landing light. Originally I, I had a different bracket for these um, landing lights. But it wasn't as true to the original ship so I changed it. So it's connected. There's the two LEDs in the back here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and take them out, but they're obviously go in under the, under the um, deck. Uh, I'll give you a sort of quick view of what it would look like if you were coming into land. So obviously you're approaching, you're making sure that um, you can see the lights, and if you can see the lights, you know you're coming in straight. And you would ch try and hit these wires here try and hit them to stop you because uh, every aircraft had a hook on the back and um, so if if you didn't manage to hit the hook and you overshot like this then you would just fly off again and that's why the Cold War carriers have angled deck as you can see and overall I am very pleased with this carrier and the way it has turned out it's just amazing I had originally planned to do some sort of um, stop motion video, although just the way things have worked out, I haven't had time. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and will continue to watch my videos in the future. I think next next video should be um, my video which I've already made of the cargo ship, and the next video after that, I'm thinking of making World War World War One dreadnought or super dreadnought. So yeah, look out for those videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.